Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining us today for worship. I hope that everyone is staying safe, everyone is staying healthy, and most importantly, that everyone is staying inside. Uh, we know that our health officials, we know that our government, our state is recommending that we stay in our house. And the best way that we can contribute, the best way that we can do our part with the whole coronavirus situation is just by uh, bringing down the amount of contact we have with other people and doing our best just to stay home. I know it's hard. I know a lot of people are going through difficult times. Uh, a lot of people are struggling financially. Other people are actually sick with this virus and they're dealing with that cough. They're dealing with the shortness of breath. They're dealing with that fever and it's, it's very tough for them. They're scared for their lives um, and, they're, and they're just fearful that they might not make it. And for the rest of us, we're just struggling just to stay home. I know it's hard. I know a lot of people are going crazy out of their mind. They're bored. They don't know what to do. They're, run, they're running out of things to do. And I can speak from personal uh, experience because my wife and I have been home for the past two weeks. You know, right now I'm in my basement. We're, I'm recording this live stream. And it's been a long two weeks. Uh, a couple of days ago, I went to the supermarket. Uh, we needed to get some food. And, you know, I'm still seeing so many people out there, so many people walking the streets, so many people just driving. And the best way we can, the best way we can contribute to everything that's going on is just by staying home. So let's do our part. Let's do the best that we can. Uh, that way, you know, this all soon finishes. And just like everyone is struggling to stay home, everyone is just going crazy out of their minds, figuring out what to do. I remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, I received uh, the most devastating news during this time period. And I got my phone, I got a notification from ESPN, and I found out that the NBA season was suspended. And the moment I read that at first, I didn't believe it. There was a, actually a game coming up when I, when I got the notification. Uh, and then just to find out that that game was actually going to be canceled as well. And I was bummed out. I was very sad. I was disappointed. Uh, simply because I'm a, I'm a huge Celtics fan. I follow up with the NBA a lot. Uh, the playoffs were right around the corner. So I was really excited about that just to find out that everything was going to be suspended. And then later on, I uh, found out that you know hockey suspended their season as well. Uh, baseball, baseball season uh, is currently postponed. Uh, many soccer tournaments were canceled, postponed. The Euros that were supposed to be played this year are, are, not, are now getting played next year. And yesterday I found out that the Olympics actually are postponing their games to next year as well. So sports are being canceled. Sports are being suspended until further notice. And I won't lie, it makes this quarantine so much harder. It makes it so much harder. And with all these seasons over, with all these seasons coming to a close for the time being, I ask myself, what does that mean to me? What does that mean for me? And I want you to ask yourself the same question this morning. With the NBA season or any season that's coming to a close, what does that mean for you? It's interesting that the Bible actually talks about seasons. And that's one of my favorite things about the Bible. Uh, whatever you're going through, whatever situation you're in, the Bible speaks to that current situation that you're in. Whatever situation you're in, you open the Bible and the Bible always has something to say to you regarding your current situation. And the Bible actually talks about seasons. If you open your Bible, if you have your Bible, open your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I know a lot of us know uh, this chapter, it's very familiar to us, uh, but let's, let's see what it says in verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. So, right, the Bible is saying everything has its season, everything has its time, every purpose under the heaven has its time. And now applying it to what we're going through now with the NBA season over, for me personally, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean for you that all these sports seasons are coming to a close? The NBA season might be over, but maybe your season isn't. Maybe your season isn't over yet. You see, Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time for everything. If we read the whole chapter, which we won't because uh, for the sake of time, uh, the whole chapter talks about time. And 
just to give you a couple examples of what Solomon says, uh, it says in chapter 3 that there's a time to love, a time to hate, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to break down, and a time to build up. And it's actually funny how in between those verses, it, it actually tells us that there's a time to embrace and there's also a time to refrain from embracing. And, you know, the Bible is just giving us a friendly reminder. You know, now is definitely not the time to be embracing each other. Uh, we know that the virus goes around very quickly, very easily. And again, just a reminder, re let's refrain from embracing uh, at the moment. So Solomon, throughout the book, he really emphasizes this idea that there's a time for everything. And if you actually have a chance to read the book of Ecclesiastes, I recommend that you do so. Uh, because Solomon starts talking about his experience. He starts talking about how in chapter 2, you know, he wanted to try new things. So for that time, he decided to go have fun, to go partying with his friends, to drink wine, uh, to get rich. And at the end of the day, after he had experienced all of that, after his time in that phase of his life passed, he realized something very important, which is a theme for the whole book, where he says, you know, all of this is vanity. In other words, he's saying that all of this is just meaningless. All of this has no purpose. All of this is just useless. And he goes through all of these experiences. And then in chapter three, he says, there's a time for everything. And... He's recognizing that his time at that moment was something else than what his time was yesterday. So the question is now, you know, what season is it for your life? With all these seasons canceled, what season is it for your life? And there's something that most of us have in common right now at the moment. And that's a very rare occasion because this rarely happens. But one of the things that almost all of us have in common is that we all have excess time. We have extra time to be doing so many things, but it's that time that, are, that is driving so many people crazy. People are just bored in their home saying, what do I do? You know, I wake up, I go, to, I go to eat, I go back to bed, I go eat again, and then I'm back in bed and it's nine o'clock. What did I do? I didn't do anything. So a lot of people are going crazy. A lot of people are running out of things to do. And... A lot of people are also asking themselves, what do I do with this time? With so many, so much time in my hands, what do I do with it? What season is it for my life? And I want to share with you that now is a perfect time to invest in yourself. It's a perfect time to invest in your family. It's a perfect time to invest in your friends. It's a perfect time to invest in your relationships, invest in your kids. And it's, it's a time... To just share as a family, to come together, um, to amend broken relationships, but most importantly, to invest in yourself. Studies show that 92% of people actually, when given free time, they choose to think about other things. They choose to think about their worries. They choose to think about their emotions. They choose to think about bills they have to pay. They choose to think about what people think about them, other situations, other problems in their lives. And they think about everything else but themselves. And only 8% of those people actually take that time to self-analyze, to self-meditate, um, to self-reflect. So now is a perfect time to invest in yourself and to start thinking about yourself. Solomon says that there's a time for everything. Again, almost throughout the whole book, he emphasizes the idea that there's a time for everything. And with everything that's happening around us, it sounds like it's the perfect time to ask God for direction. It's the perfect time to ask God for leadership. It's a good time to ask God for guidance. It's, it's something that we're all dealing with. We're all dealing with the same thing. Everyone is panicking. And God has given us this time to really sit down and talk to him and say, God, I'm feeling so many things. I'm scared. Uh, someone is sick in my family. Tell me what I have to do. Or better yet, God, now is the time that I want to fix my relationship with you. Now is the time that I want you to tell me what my purpose is here on earth. What do you want me to do with my life? What is your plans for my life? 
So that's the time that God is giving us now. This is your season. This is your season for growth. This is your season for development. And this is also your season for transformation. This is your season when you can adjust, when you can change, when you can eliminate things in your life, when you can add things to your life that is going to enhance your experience here on earth, that is also going to uh, enhance your Christian and spiritual experience here on earth. But God has been so gracious enough to give us this time. You know, we don't deserve this time. And I'm the type to look at the positive of things. I'm very optimistic and I say, you know, maybe it's not a time to be afraid and lock ourselves in a room. Maybe it's a time to invest in ourselves, to grow, to develop ourselves into mature Christians, to grow with God. And maybe if you think you don't have a relationship with God, maybe it's a perfect time to start a relationship with Him. So God is so gracious with the time that He's giving us to work on these things. So God is saying, make the best out of it. Because the Bible also says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16, uh, it tells us to make good use of our time because the days are evil. And if we look around us, if we open our windows, if we open our doors, if we turn on the TV, we know very well that the days are becoming more and more evil. And God is saying, make good use of your time because you don't have much left. And if we actually read the verse before it, it's interesting enough because God wants you and I to be wise with this time. He tells us in verse 15 that to make sure that we're walking not as unwise, but as wise. So as we're walking as wise people, God wants us to use our time wisely. Because after this is all over, we'll never get this time back. And that's really the downside about all of this. It's really, you know, the dark side about this. We're never going to get this time back. If we don't take advantage of what God has given us, if we don't take advantage of the time God is giving us today at this moment, we might look back at this time and say, I could have been doing this, or I could have done that, but I never did. You know, think about it. Uh, when people um, are freaking out, when people are going crazy over things like toilet paper, and they're going crazy over things like hand sanitizer, people are paying 30 to $35 for Purell, for cleaning products. They're going crazy about food. They're going crazy about water. And they're just losing their minds. We're losing our minds. And again, it's interesting how the Bible actually tells us. In Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus actually asks a question. And he says, you know, why do you worry about life? Why are you so anxious about life? Why do you worry about what you're going to eat? Why do you worry about what you're going to drink? Why do you worry about what you're going to wear? And in verse 34, he actually says, don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today because tomorrow has its own worries and sufficient are today's worries. We don't need any more worries today. Leave those worries for tomorrow. And it's crazy to think and to acknowledge that people are freaking out over toilet paper. People are freaking out over, over uh, just getting all these needs in their house and stacking up in their closets simply because they're worried about tomorrow. People are losing it because they don't know if they're going to have toilet paper, paper tomorrow. They don't know if they're going to have food in their fridge tomorrow. But God is saying, you know, worry about today. It's interesting that between verse uh, 24 to 36, God actually makes a call and says, you know, just look at everything around you. Look at the environment. Look at the animals. Uh, look at nature. Look how I dress them. Look how I take care of them. Look at the birds in the air, he says. And look how I take care of them. And then he says, how much more am I not going to take care of you? Because you are special to me. And we really need to remind people of this. If we were about today, God is going to care about it. And he's going to care and take care of everything else around us. He's going to take care of you and he's going to take care of me. And, you know, God says, don't worry about that. I really can take care of you if you trust me. I really can take care of you if you have faith in me. And, you know, when we look back at this time, let's say a year from now, or two years from now, or five or ten years from now, and we, and we ask ourselves, you know, what was 2020 like? Do you remember 2020? Do you remember when the whole coronavirus situation was going on? Uh, what do you remember? You know, some of us will actually say, you know, yeah, that was the time I freaked out. That was the time I, I hoarded on uh, 
a toilet paper and I stacked up on water and cereal and so much food and I was just scared you know it was a time of panic and I really didn't get anything done because I was so scared but then there's other people who will actually say you know yes I do remember that time you know why because that was the time that God gave me to work on my relationship with my spouse it was a time God gave me to spend time with my kids you know my kids are always at school but now they were home at that time they were home they weren't in school and I was actually able to sit down read a book to them spend time with them play games with them or other people will say you know I remember 2020 because that was the time and that was the year God gave me to start a relationship with him that was the time where I got to know God at a more personal and in-depth level so a lot of people will remember 2020 differently but my hope for all of you and for myself is that we make this year different than the others. If God is giving us this amount of time, if God is giving us this time period to make good use of it, it is our season. It is our season to grow. It is our season to develop. It is our season for transformation. And this season won't come back around again. You know, it'll be very devastating for people who will go through this time, look back at it and say, you know, I was really not able to accomplish anything during that time. But get, but again, God reminds us, you know, there's a time for everything. But for this time right now, for this time today, God really wants us to do something positive, to do something optimistic in our life, to bring transformation, to bring growth uh, to bring maturation and just to bring positive development in our lives. You know, this NBA season is going to be back. Uh, all the soccer games are going to be back. The NHL is going to resume its season. Uh, baseball is going to start their season eventually. And things are going to go back to just the way they were. And when they do go back to what to, to how they were before, it's going to be a very sad experience for us because we'll think about the time where there was no NBA. We'll think about the time where there was no soccer, no baseball, and no hockey. And we'll really think about it and say, I could have done something during that time. But now that everything is back to normal, if we think everything is going to go back to normal, we're going to ask ourselves, we're going to ask ourselves what do I do now? I don't have time. But during the virus, I had so much time and I got nothing accomplished. Once again, this is your time. This is my time. This is our season. This is the season that God is giving us to do something good and to do something positive in our lives. Before I finish, I want to leave three things with you. And the first one is the one I've emphasized the most. This is your season. This is your time. This is your season of growth. This is your season of development. This is your season of just guidance and improvement. And the second thing I want to leave with you is be wise with this time. Again, Ephesians 5.16 says, you know, make good use of your time because the days are evil. And then God reminds us that we need to walk as wise people. So again, it's your season, but be wise with that time. Be wise with the season that God is giving you. And the third and last thing I want to leave everyone with is that take this time one day at a time. You know, Matthew 6, uh, 34 says, Tomorrow will bring its worries. Enough are, its, are today's worries. So, again, let's be reminded that maybe last week you think about your time and you say, All I did was watch TV. Or all I did was uh, I was on uh, TikTok or I was on Instagram or I was on Facebook. And I really didn't get anything done. You know, the amazing thing about God is that he tells you, forget about that. Don't worry about that anymore. What's in the past stays in the past. What I want you to worry about is today. If you didn't get anything done last week, get something done today. Invest in yourself. Grow. Establish a relationship with me. And he is saying, take each time, one day at a time. Forget about tomorrow. Focus on today. You know, God also doesn't want us to promote fear during this time. And if we look everywhere around us, that's, the, that's what everybody is promoting. 
you know you turn on the TV the media is promoting this fear and you know the, the, the point of emphasis is you know there's new cases there's more sick people there's more deaths and I remember a couple of weeks ago where even here in Massachusetts uh, the number was down at 120 something cases and then a couple of weeks later now we're over a thousand cases here in Massachusetts and the number is only rapidly growing and it's in, it's instinct to grow fear it's instinct to be panicked and it's instinct to be scared but God during this time wants us to promote hope God wants us uh, to promote growth God wants us to promote development God wants us to make and create this movement where where the world is panicking when the world is freaking out when the world is going crazy you know there's a group of people that are being optimistic through all of these circumstances and they're saying you know things might look bad but have hope you know believe in God because God is in control God knows what he's doing God is taking care of you. God is with you. You're not alone. So as, as long as we're still during and experiencing these tough times, you know, it is our time to promote this hope, to prom promote this growth and to promote this development that God has given us the opportunity to do so. So once again, if there's anything that you take away from this is remember that this is your season. You know, we don't know how much longer this is going to, to happen. We don't know how much longer this virus is going to be a problem in this world. But remember that this is your season. This is your time to make a difference in your life. And maybe it's the time for you to make a difference in someone else's life. So let's remember, let's keep hopeful. Let's keep optimistic because we know that God is with us. We know that God is right next to us and we know that he's in control. Everything in this world is under God's control, and let's trust in Him. So thank you guys for joining in. I do want to remind you that every week we're going to be uh, live streaming at 11.15. So make sure to join us next Saturday. And once again, I hope everyone is staying safe, everyone is staying healthy, but also that everyone is staying inside. Let's do our part, let's contribute, and let's all work together. So thanks for joining in, and God bless.